Now, when it comes to true play, there's a lot of misconception because we don't actually know how true play works. But what we know is that true play helps to do two things. One is to tame the frequencies within the room. So if your room is making the sound sound awkward and sound funny to you, true play takes into account that kind of reflection, the kind of setup that you have in your room because every room sounds different. And True Play also does the second thing, which is to adjust for your main listening position so that all your speakers, the sounds, will reach you at the same time. So it doesn't matter if your speakers are a little bit further away or a little bit closer to you, depending on where you are, True Play will actually take care of that. Now, if you are not very sure how important it is to actually uh, take care of the room surrounding, then let me give you an example. Now, if you go into a cinema, you know that the whole cinema hall is very well treated and the sound has very little reflection. The seats are all very soft. The walls are covered with uh, sound dampening material. So there's very little reflection and there's very little boom that's caused by the bass notes reflecting against the wall and amplifying itself against the walls by bouncing to and fro. Now to give you an example of what this is, right? This room here is pretty well treated. I have posters up here. I have um, what do you call those foam panels from Elgato to make sure that it doesn't reflect the sound that much. Now if I were to contrast, let me go to another very badly treated room in my house, which is the toilet. Let's go. So this is a very quick test within another completely different room. And in this particular case, it is my toilet. And as you can hear from my voice, I am sounding completely different. We have hard walls, we have glass, and we have a huge mirror on the other side that is reflecting all the sounds. And when I'm within this confined space where my voice is bouncing between the wall and the glass and to and fro, you can hear that the whole sound of this room is completely different. And which is why it's easy to tell when somebody is talking from you when they're taking a dump in the toilet. So let's get back to the studio where you will get my pristine voice coming across to you yet again. So as you can tell, there is a huge difference in how each individual room sounds and True Play promises to take care of that. Now, when it comes to True Play, there are many, many factors to consider. Some of you, and including myself, right, over the last two or three years, have considered using different phones. So of course the phone matters, right? Because you can use an iPhone 7 or you can use the latest iPhone 14 Pro which I have in my hands right now. It will all change the frequency tuning because the mic capsule in the phone is different from generation to generation. Now Sonos does take care of that because it supports some phone and when the new phone comes out, Sonos takes another couple of months to tune it for the specific mic on the phone. But I do realize over time that the differences introduced by the phone is actually little, right? I mean, there's a little bit of difference, but it's quite little as compared to the technique of doing true play. Now, what do I mean by technique of doing true play? Now, when you do true play, there are two things, right? Um, for those of you who are setting it up for a home theater product like the Sonos Arc or Sonos Beam Gen 2, the first step is to actually measure your location, where you are and where the speakers are relative to your listening position. The second step will involve you walking around the room and that is when Sonos will actually decipher whether some notes are a little bit too high or some frequencies are a little bit too low and whether it needs to pull down those frequencies or bump up those frequencies in order for you to enjoy the sound like the Sonos engineers intended. Now that's according to what they like, but I do think that it's a pretty good sound. Now on my channel, I don't usually do um, any testing with TruePlay because not everybody has access to TruePlay. So it's the same right now because only iOS devices will support TruePlay. Now there are some speakers like the Sonos Roam and the Sonos Move, which has an onboard mic to do auto TruePlay and it will tune its sound according to where you place it. The newer speakers like the ERA 100 and the ERA 300 that I have here, they also have auto TruePlay, which then opens up TruePlay to Android users. Now, Android users, you can't actually perform TruePlay using the Android device, like what you can do on the iPhones, but it does enable you to turn on or turn off TruePlay. So have a try and see whether that benefits you and whether that sounds better for you. Now, one thing to note is that that auto TruePlay on the ERA 100 or the ERA 300 doesn't actually enable your whole system, including the Sonos Arc, from benefiting from the TruePlay. So the original TruePlay version still requires an iOS device for you to best tune your system 
for your best listening enjoyment. So as I've alluded to earlier in my videos, I mentioned that the technique of true play actually matters more than the model of the iPhone that you're using to perform the true play. Now, what do I mean by technique? Now, Sonos does actually advise you, gives you some tips on how to perform true play. They will tell you to wave the phone slowly. And if you look at the video closely, when you are waving the phone, the mic is actually pointing upwards because at some point during the true play, you do actually have to rotate the phone upside down and when the mic is um, in your hands it is actually pointing upwards now don't point the phone towards the floor because for most people the floor is actually a source of reflection even if you don't actually realize it and you're actually going to be much closer to the floor than to the ceiling so if you look at the video of the lady doing the true play at no point in time is she actually pointing the mic towards the floor so that's one thing that you have to take note some other things like keeping the microphone grill clean and free of lint and dust is actually important Removing your casing is also important because some casing actually do block the microphone grills. And one other thing that you need to take care of is to ensure that your environment is quiet. When I perform true play, I actually do turn off my computers and I turn off the air conditioner so that the humming doesn't actually create the noise. Now, at some point in time during true play, when it gets too noisy for you or when you're waving the phone too fast and the air rushes over the whole microphone grill, it actually creates noise and true play will stop when it detects excessive noise. So keep everybody in the household quiet ask for two minutes of the time to you know not talk which might be difficult but one of the most important thing that true play cannot correct for is speaker placement now if you have bad speaker placement then no amount of true play no advanced form of true play is going to help so when you are putting the sonos arc or the sonos beam or even the ray or any speaker that you're trying to put through true play make sure that they are not stuffed into a cubby hole there's no um, no solid objects blocking the sides of the grill or to the top of the grill if you have upward firing speaker channels like the Sonos ERA 300 which has upward firing drivers or the Sonos Arc which has also upward firing drivers make sure that nothing is blocking the top of the speaker and of course don't go about shoving these into cubby holes in your bookshelves or anything they are meant to have a little bit of free play a little bit of free space around them so that the speaker can breathe and the sound signals can come out and throw into your room successfully now one of the most important variable in true play is how you actually perform the second part of true play which is how you wave and how you walk around the room now as a matter of fact in the standardized version what you need to do is to start from your main listening position so if i'm in my main listening position i keep myself still and i go through the first part of the true play now the second part involves walking around and that's the part with the most variables now i'm going through two forms of true play today one is the standard true play and the other one is the extreme true play so what is standard true play and what is extreme true play now for standard true play i do it as per normal right so what i do is a few tips i have for you avoid the corners of the room avoid going too close to the wall boundaries and avoid going too close to your speakers be it the sonos arc or the era 300 or even going too close to your subwoofers because that will throw the levels off and make sure that you actually walk towards and center around your main listening position so for me i start off the waving at the center of the uh, main listening position and once that is done waving around the area i will go around the perimeter of the room but keeping well clear of the wall boundaries and i'll make one round i'll go back to the center position again and i'll make a star shape to the front left the front right and then the rear left and the rear right all the while coming back to the center and that should finish your one minute mark so that's the standard true play now what is extreme true play in extreme true play my main listening position is off center right so i totally do the first step by creating and putting myself in a position where it is not normal right it is to the extreme left of the speaker and so that you know you're completely off center so that will throw the sound off a little bit and subsequently in the second step when i'm supposed to walk around the room and wave the whole phone i go very very close to the ceiling i go into the corners of the room i wave my hands around the boundary of the room and i even go very very close to the speakers to the subwoofers to the surround speakers such that all the levels and volumes are going to be thrown off and i intentionally avoid the main listening position so that is my form of extreme show play and the results is gonna surprise you right because the the results are so different which is why i'm saying that 
the model of the phone matters a lot less than how you actually do true play. Now, when I say it's extreme true play, I don't mean that it is better or it is worse. And in order to illustrate that to you, I'm going to throw out some frequency response charts. So if you look at the frequency response chart here, in yellow, I have the whole Sonos Arc system playing from 20 hertz all the way to 20 kilohertz without true play. So you will notice that there is a slight bump in the base region of about at about 150 hertz or so as illustrated here. And it will dip down towards one kilohertz where it will hold all the way to 10 kilohertz and then taper off. So that is the Sonos Arc with two subs and two ERA 300s. And that's the standardized response rate without true play. Now, when I do the standard true play, the standardized technique of doing true play, that's the green curve. Now, in the green curve, you see that what Sonos did was actually to bump up the mid bass response and even bump up a little bit on the bass region side so that you get more presence of bass. Now, after doing true play, you realize that your sound system, your whole setup is going to sound a lot bassier. But what is important is if you take a look at the mid range between 300 and 500 hertz, it would have actually brought it down a little bit so that those voices are a little bit less in your face but from 400 500 hertz onwards right all the way to one kilohertz the green part would have been lifted slightly so there's more presence in the upper registers of the mid-range extending all the way into treble so the whole system is going to sound a little bit brighter and a little bit sharper than without true play now, what is interesting down is to look at the curve introduced by Extreme True Play. So if you look at the green curve, there are some changes and it is subtle, right? So that's what True Play is designed to do. It's supposed to change your sound signature slightly by pulling or bumping up some frequencies a little bit. But in the extreme case of Extreme True Play, you'll notice that the whole sound signature has completely changed, right? So looking at the red curve, everything is bumped up tremendously and it was even audible without referring to this frequency response chart and when i did that everything sounded brighter everything sounded louder at the same standardized volume of 50 on the sonos setup you will notice that bass mid-range treble and everything is just bumped up tremendously so the extreme version of the true play was me going to the corners of the room going very near the speakers very near the subwoofer very near the surrounds and going everywhere in the room except for the main listening position now is that better or is that worse i'll leave it to you to comment for me personally i didn't like the extreme version of the true play yes everything sounded louder but it is an artificially lifted volume right so and it did sound a little bit fatiguing because it was all the treble was going into my ears uh, at the same volume. So what you need to do is to actually reduce the volume a little bit after you perform the extreme version of the true play, bring it down a notch, right? And uh, how much? Maybe by about 3 to 5 dB even. Uh, on your volume slider, you probably bring down from 50 to maybe about 40 or 38 thereabout, and it will bring the levels down to the same volume as you were listening, the same perceived volume as you were listening on the regular non-true play or the standard true play volume. Now, when you do that, the whole frequency response curve, like the new red curve that I have would have been brought down so that the sound signature is similar to the non-true play or the standard true play version. But when you do that, what happens is that the bass, if you will notice, would have been brought down slightly. So you may not get such a great bass response at the lower volume already. So my recommendation is to still perform a standardized true play. Now I'm going to show you how the standardized true play goes like. So this will be my main listening position. The TV is right in front. The Sonos Arc is right in front. I have two subs, one to either side of the Sonos Arc and two ERA 300 to the rear of me position left and right, of course. So we're going to start true play now and I will walk you through the correct technique to run true play, the standardized technique.
So this is the first step which is over and this is to adjust the face of all the speakers. It applies only to the home theater products. So that's the next step. Now it's balanced. The next step will involve walking around the room as shown here. So I'm ready to tune. Let's go. And true play tuning is complete. So if you notice what I did during the true play, the first step when it involves phasing of the speaker, adjusting for the position, I'm seated right at my main listening position and I position the mic very, very close to my face, almost at ear level, which is my standardized listening position. Just take note not to breathe into the microphone because the mic is going to pick up your breathing. So the next step when it involves walking around, I started by going within my main listening position first and then I cover the perimeter of the room taking care not to go too close to the walls nor the speakers avoiding the boundaries of the room so after I finish one sweep and come back to the center I will go into the four corners and one to the rear one to the front right front left actually and come back to the middle again and go to the front right and come back to the middle go to the rear right and come back to the middle and that should complete everything within one minute now don't wave too fast don't wave too slowly either and avoid noisy environments if you are waving too fast the air movement across the microphone grill will actually deteriorate the true play results and of course just make sure that your microphone grills they are clean and there's no lint and no dust blocking the microphone capsule. So this is a standardized technique. I have another technique, which is the more extreme technique. So in an extreme technique, what happens is that I go off center when I did the face, the first phase of the true play, which is to actually record where you are in relation to all the speakers. So I'm in a very awkward position and I'm starting the first phase here and I'm not putting it to my ear position. And I'm just, you know, the sound that is going to pick up where the um, phone is where the main listening position is in relation to all the speakers are going to be all messed up including the sub and in the second phase of it I will move around the room and I'll go to the extremes I'll go into the corner of the room I'll go very very close to the speakers in fact I'll go very very close to the subwoofers too and it will pick up all those sounds very very loudly I go across the front of the Sonos Arc such that it picks up all the sound from there as well and I intentionally avoid the main listening position now in in this extreme true play example, is it a better option? I'm actually not very sure. So take a look at the frequency response curves to judge for yourself. Now, you might try one of the standard or the extreme techniques and let me know your experience down in the comments below. So if this video has helped you in any way, I appreciate a super thanks on the video so that you can contribute to my channel and keep me moving and making all these videos to keep helping you get the most out of your Sotos system. I also have a Patreon account and if you can visit the Patreon link by scanning the QR code, you can set up a monthly contribution. Now I've also set up a member section. I'm not sure what to do with it. I've set the price pretty high. So for the 
the one single contributor, one single member, AVG, right here. Thank you for your support. It really helps me by uh, motivating me to do better on this channel. I'm going to think of things to put into that members section so that members can benefit more from this channel. So to end off today's video, I'm going to show you a recording of the Sonos Arc with the Dual Sub and the Era 300 and it is playing a Dolby Atmos clip. Now this is recorded using binaural uh, microphones so you will be able to hear exactly how it sounds like, like it sounds to me when I'm sitting in my main listening position. So we will go into the non-true play version first which will be followed by a true play version using the standardized mode. So for those of you who are interested in the extreme version of the whole Dolby Atmos clip with Extreme True Play Engage. I have actually uploaded the video in my members only section. I'm sorry, I do have to put it in the members section, but for most parts and for most intents and purposes, these two video demos should be able to help you. This is Dolby Atmos the world's first object-based cinematic audio. With powerful moving audio that transcends from channels to moving around you with pinpoint accuracy. Soundscape sits the mood of the scene. Or captures the full extent of nature's fury. is Dolby Atmos, the world's first object-based cinematic audio. With powerful moving audio that transcends from channels to moving around you with pinpoint accuracy. Soundscape sits the mood of the scene. Your vehicle to the side of the road. Whoa! Whoa. Or captures the full extent of nature's fury. Okay, so I hope you have enjoyed the video so far. So for those of you who wants to look at the sound demo of the Sonos Arc with the Extreme True Play Engage, do remember to check out this video. It is placed in the members only section. 
even without checking it, you're fine. So, you know, take it as you want to support me. And that is my little tidbit for rewarding you for your support. So thank you and I'll see you in my next video.